kindergarten. Wait, I have to show you something. I have a shirt that says, hello, kindergarten. Well, how are you guys doing today? Are we doing good? Good. Did you all watch chapel this morning with Mrs. Garvin and our favorite monkey, Georgie? That was so much fun. Well, today is March 27th, 2020. That means you have completed two weeks worth of learning at home. That's amazing. And I am beyond proud of you. So much so, can I give you a high five for all the hard work you did today? Okay, we're gonna give a high five on three, ready? One, two, three, high five! Wait, you missed me, try again. One, two, three, high five! You missed me again. One, two, three, high five! Oh, we'll try it one more time. One, two, three, high five! You got me. And I wanna give you a big hug because I'm just so proud of you. Ready? One, two, three, big hug. Yay. Guys, truly, you've been working so hard and you are amazing kindergartner, kindergartner kids. Well, let's begin our morning with a song, the good morning song. Ready? Begin. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, KB. Good morning to you. Your turn. Thank you, guys. Well, let's begin our morning with Jesus Calling. These are Jesus' words to you. He wants to talk to you this morning, and this is what he's going to say. All right. This one says, stay close to me. I am here to forgive you when you do something wrong. Oh, we've learned that, huh, boys and girls? Whenever we make a choice, and it's not a good choice, and it's a sin, what should we do? Pretend we never did it? No, we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. And does when you do that to Jesus, does he ever say, mm, no, that sin was too big, I can't forgive you? No, he always will forgive you. And he's saying that right here. He said, stay close to me. I am here to forgive you when you do wrong. Forgiveness is a free gift. And when you forgive others, the light of my love glows through you like a candle shining in the darkness. Oh, I love this one. So Jesus is saying, when you do something wrong, don't run away and pretend you didn't do it. Go to him, tell him he'll forgive you. And then when you receive forgiveness, you can pass forgiveness on to other people. Like when people do something wrong to you, instead of staying upset with them, you can learn how, how to forgive them because God forgave you. So the memory verse says, forgive each other because the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13. That was really good. I love reading from this because I'm learning a lot too. All right, well, let's, um, I don't have any more students who've sent in videos of what they're thankful for, so we're just going to go straight into our prayer time, okay? All right, bow your heads, close your eyes, say, Dear Jesus, thank you for chapel, and that I learned something new. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Please bless our day. Give us lots of energy and focus. 
for today. And thank you for healing James. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I love when I when you guys pray with me. Thank you for praying with me. Um, let's do. You know what we haven't done, and it's actually my fault. Is our sing scripture verse? Yeah, and actually, I want to teach you a new part today. Okay, so so far we've learned that I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. And the next part goes like this. As the branch, say as the branch, because you are the branch. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. That was kind of long. So as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. So it's going to sound like this with the song. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. So as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. So abide, that word abide means to stay close. So I'm pretending I'm hugging Jesus. That's what it means to abide in him. All right, let's start from the beginning. As the branch cannot bear fruit, by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me let's try that again as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you Unless you abide in me. Good job, boys and girls. And you can keep practicing, practicing that on your own with the Sing Scripture website. Sing Scripture, um, if you type it into Google, you will find the songs there. And then you can practice at home. Okay. Well, now let's review our special sounds. Today, you're just telling me the sound. Ready? Begin. Burr, grr, purr, sm, sp, sk. Good. Kerr. Twa. Sn. Sol. Do the motions. Swa. And our new one that we learned yesterday was this one. Can you echo after me? Echo. S P L says spool as in splash. Now I realized in music <laughs> today that it's not the word splash in the dinosaur song. It's the word flop with the great big flop or plop flop. But we're still gonna do that same motion for splash. Okay, so let's say it together. S P L says spool as in splash. Make a big splash in the pool. Now you have to be careful boys and girls because these two special sounds are almost the same. Do you know what the difference is in between these two special sounds, sp and spool? Yes, it's that 
spool has an L next to it. So when you see both of these, maybe in your phonics worksheet, you have to watch if there's an L after the sp. If so, it's its own special sound. It wouldn't be sp -ol, sp -ol. It would be sp -ol. So be careful for that, okay? Let's say it one more time. S-P-L says spool as in splash. And some words that have spool in it, let's read it. Spool it split. Like Matthew, he's able to split his legs. I saw him do it. It was amazing, the splits. Or have you ever eaten a banana split before? Ooh, that's delicious. Let's do um, this one. Spool, remember not sp -ol. it's spool at splat. When something goes splat, it goes like this, splat. It's like squished, flat, splat. Let's do this word up here. Spool in spleen. Spleen is an organ in your body or a body part. Okay, this word is a big word. So what they did is they split it up so it's easier for you to read. So first we read that one, then we read this one, and then we combine it at the end. So let's read the first one. Spool n splen. That's not a word. So let's complete it. D id did. Splen did. Splendid. That means like wonderful, fantastic, terrific, splendid. You are, my class is splendid. They're wonderful. Let's say this one one more time. Say S P L says spool as in splash. Okay, I'm going to write one word from there on this whiteboard. Whoopsies. Did I do something? Okay, cool. Spool. It. Okay. This word, we need to circle special sounds and mark the vowels. So who can tell me what the special sound is in this word? It's spool. Not just spool. It's spool, good. So what do we do for special sounds? We circle them, and how many vowels are in this word? One. So we give it a smile. Now we can read it. Spool, it, split. Why, can you split your legs? I can't, I used to when I was little and I took gymnastics, but not anymore. All right, the next word we're gonna do is this one. Okay, what is the special sound? Spool, good job, not just p, it's spool. So we circle it. How many vowels? Two. So the first vowel says the long sound, the second vowel is silent. Now we can read it. Spool, een, spleen. See how much easier it is to read words once you circle special sounds and mark the vowels? Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, or not pretty soon, you, you are ready when you're reading your books, you're imagining those like lines and circling of special sounds to help you read. Good job, boys and girls. Okay, well, I want to show pictures and videos of your friends learning at home. So first we have Evan. This is Evan reading her sight words. Let's see if she did it in 15 seconds. Yeah. Yay, Evan! I'm so proud of you. This is of Zo um, sorry, not Zoe. Ariel finding 
all the cylinders in her house. Wow, she found a lot. Whoa. And this is the biggest cylinder. Whoa. And this is the prettiest cylinder. <laughs> good job, Ariel. You were very you are you were a very good cylinder detective. You found a lot of different kinds of cylinders. This one is of Logan. He went on to Art Hub and drew this is a chocolate bunny, Miss Kamara. Bye. And drew a chocolate bunny. That's amazing, Logan. So proud of you. Ariel also drew something from Art Hub. She drew a unicorn. That's beautiful. Look at that. You guys are amazing at art. All right, and we have Abby reading in a Fort with a flashlight. I love reading with the flashlight. That is so fun, Abby. And this is Abby finding nickels in her house. And she's counting them by fives. Good job, Abby. Ooh, you guys are doing school in PJs? That's so fun. We never got to do that when we were in school. See how fun it is to learn at home? This is Logan, and he found pennies. Nickels, dimes, and put it in ABC order. I am um, American flag, and this is my ABC pattern. Penny, dime, nickel. Good bye, job, bye, bye, Logan. Bye. I love how many you found. And you made it into American flag. That's very creative. Um, I think that's it for today. All right. Well, let's do our sight word song. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to spell it first. How Our sight word is R. How do you spell R? A. R. E. R, R, R. Oh, the seal at the zoo says to me, R, R. First an A, then an R, then an E. R, R. Oh, his favorite word is R. And he sings it like a star. First an A, then an R, then an E. R, R. Good job, guys. Let's do it with the motion now. There we go. Oh, the seal at the zoo says to me, R, R. First an A, then an R, then an E. R, R. Oh, his favorite word is R. And he sings it like a star. First an A, then an R, then an E. R, R. Now I'm going to play this song with music. You can't see the video, I'm sorry, but you can definitely sing along. Are you ready? Okay. A, R, E. R. Do the motion. Uh, spell it again. A R E. Yay! R. Good job, boys and girls. Okay. Well, let's get into what you are going to be doing for today. So, please take out your daily schedule. Some of you have colored every single box, and I just want to say, wow, you're amazing. Good job. So, today, you're reading from your green book, book four. It looks like this. I do read book four. You are going to read from pages eight to eleven today. At the seaside, pond fun. Just those two stories, sorry. So you're gonna read at 
the C side. Oh, and look, there's a sight word underneath there that we actually haven't learned yet. We learned said, but we haven't learned says yet. And that is our sight word for next week. So for right now, oopsies, I forgot to teach that. I, I jumped into R before says. So S-A-Y-S, that word in the box is says. Can you say says? It looks like it should be says, but that's not how you read the word. S-A-Y-S is says. Like Miss Kimura says that she loves me so much and she's so proud of me. That is what she says. We don't say that's what she says. That's what she says. So I'll, we'll work on this one next week. Don't worry if you don't know it right now. All right, so again, page eight and nine and 10, 11 about pond fun. These two girls are making something in the mud. Do you know what they're making? Mud pies. Um, so if it's good weather today, I would like you to grab like a towel or a blanket and lay it in the grass and read outside. It's so fun to read out in the sunshine. If it's not good weather and if mom and dad would rather you read inside, well, that's fine. You can take your blanket or towel, lay it on the floor, pretend you're at the beach and read your book. Okie dokie. Thank you, all right. Then after that, you're gonna do your writing worksheet. It's writing worksheet 129, so 129 is on the bottom, and the back side, 130, 130, 130. Today you're practicing the letters uppercase L, lowercase L, and then writing sentences with uppercase L in them. I like this sentence because there's an exclamation point at the end. So you can practice writing your exclamation point and reading it in the excited voice. So whenever we have an exclamation point, we don't read sentences like this. Luke and Lee go fast. No, it wants you to read it in excited voice. So it'd be like this. Luke and Lee go fast. On the back side, you're practicing uppercase N, lowercase N, and using sen and then writing a sentence with an uppercase N. You guys got this. Make sure you have your finger spaces, that the first word is the cap is uppercase, and at the end of a sentence, you have some type of punctuation, whether the exclamation point, a period, or a question mark. But you're just, say, tracing, and writing, tracing and writing. And there are red dots for you to help you write your words, but we ignore those because sometimes we write bigger than how they want us to. So what's most important to me is that you have your finger spaces. All right, after that, you're gonna do your math worksheet. Make sure you take some breaks in between these lessons so that you know, you're not just working the whole way through. Walk around, move around. Okay, today is math lesson number 96. You're going to write your first and your last name. And some of you have even started writing your middle name. That's really cool. Well, these are nickels. And do you know how I know they're nickels? Because they've got Thomas Jefferson on them. He's right here. And Thomas Jefferson kind of looks like the dime, but how I know it's the nickel is because he's got that ponytail going down his neck, right? So when you see the ponytail, that's Thomas Jefferson, that's the nickel, and a nickel is worth five cents. So the reason why we learn how to count by fives is because it's really important when we to count by fives with nickels. It helps us. If we didn't know how to count by fives, we would have to count the nickels like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. It's so much easier to go like this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And so what I want you to do is count the nickels 
see how many cents are in each row, and then match it. So I just counted that, and that was 30 cents, so I match it to the 30 cents. And then you're gonna do the rest on your own. On the back, you're going to continue practicing writing your numbers one through 30. And at the end, remember, it's counting by five. So it would be five, 10, 15, 20. All right. Um, after that, ooh, I suggested what you could do is you can um, make a store at your house. Some of you have like, play kitchens or like plastic food or a lot of you have toys. So what you're gonna do is you're going to make like a little store. So how I would make a store is I would cut up little pieces of paper and I would write how many cents each item cost. Today, you're gonna make sure that the items cost either five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 has to be um, a multiple of five or one of the numbers you say when counting by five. It can't be 17 because when we count by fives, we never say 17. So remember it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Some, uh, one, one of those numbers. You're gonna write that for each item and then you're gonna like get some tape and then tape, them, tape it on each item and then your mom and dad, or, or you could be the cashier. That means someone's gonna go shopping in your store, they're gonna buy different items, and then they're gonna have to pay for it. And when they pay for it, they're gonna have to use nickels. So I hope you have some nickels at home. Um, and so you can either pretend to do the shopping in your own store and like pay your mom and dad, or your mom and dad can go shopping in your store and they can pay you with nickels. Um, oops, forgot to say one thing. Actually, with your store, everything is worth five cents. So if you have a Lego, it's worth five cents. If you have a doll, it's worth five cents. If you have a cup, it's worth five cents. If you have a, a, a plastic apple, five cents. I, I messed up before I said, um, you can do any number from five to 50 and write it as the price, but actually everything is just worth five cents. And then when they pay for it, they have to count by five to see how much everything cost, or you have to count by five to see how much everything cost. Does that make sense? I'm sure your parents can help you with that. Um, but that's not something you have to do. That's just something you can do if you have time. Um, and then I said to, this one says, write your sight words on the sidewalk with chalk. So if some of you have chalk at home, what you can do if it's good weather and if mom and dad say okay, if they don't say okay, then you can just practice your sight words on a piece of paper. But you can get chalk and go outside and write your sight words with chalk. I think that would be so much fun to do. And then maybe you can play a game of your parents say a sight word and you have to run to it and stand on top of that sight word. So you can like write all these different sight words all over your sidewalk or driveway. And then your parents will say two and you have to run to two. And then they'll say you and then you have to find you. And if you have a brother or sister, you guys could play a game of who can run to it first. Um, and then your last thing you're gonna do is, for Bible, you're gonna read a Bible story with your family. Um, a lot of you